What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're gonna be talking about database normalization. And this video is going to be very practical. I'm not going to go into, you know, 1F, 2F, voice cod, normalization, all of these, you know, terms. This is mostly going to be like, I'm going to take you from looking at a bad database design and getting you to the point where you can actually just look at like a database and be like, hey, this is where I need to normalize this database and this is where like I can increase efficiencies and I'm going to teach you how to just like look at like a bad database design and how to take it from a bad database design to a good database design through normalization and without fancy words. So really database database normalization is you're eliminating redundancy in databases um, redundancy is going to be what kills your database in terms of performance it makes your database tables look terrible they're difficult to decipher and database normalization is how we simplify and also increase the efficiency of the design good design is everything in databases and um, simplicity and programming and database design is beauty so always if you can always err towards simplicity because simplicity is you know beauty in software <laughs> that's that was a little corny but you get the picture so this is a bad database design like if you if you designed a database like this for somebody and <laughs> you show this to them like people are gonna freak out and i don't know if you'll get fired but they're probably going to make you take a, a you're probably going to be watching this youtube video let's just say that so what you want to do is first just look at this and say where's like redundancy going on and you may be thinking like well this just looks like a good database why don't we just always put our uh why don't we just put all of our columns just in one jump like why don't why do we even have tables or why do we even split apart tables why can't we just have like one big table for all of our data and this is kind of like what would happen if you kind of had that philosophy on databases on so what's going on here is number one we have redundancy right here in our columns and we also have redundancy in our records i always say like just look at the columns and look at the records if you if you're seeing a lot of redundancy that means you're probably going to you know start looking towards normalizing these tables and busting them busting them up into different tables we also have like a little bit of redundancy right here but redundancy is to a certain extent you're always going to have a little bit of redundancy so you kind of have to just uh you know play the yin and the yang like there's you know a balance and if you split it if you split up a table too much it, it'll look terrible and it'll be confusing too because you'll have so many tables but if you don't split them up enough you'll have like these god tables and just huge tables that you can't even decipher so really here we need to split up the country and we need to split up the owner and here you need to identify the relationship too like are we splitting it up in a one to many or are we splitting it up in a many to many and if you can kind of just think about it like that that's really all you need to do so just to give you kind of like the answer to the you know question, we're gonna split up country into a one-to-many and we're gonna split up owners into a many-to-many. -many. And also, terrible design here, our Pokemon doesn't even have a, a, a primary key. And that's how, remember what I told you in the very beginning, primary keys and foreign keys are going to be how we're going to split up and how we're going to actually link them because there's no point in even splitting them up if we can't link them so once again we're going to go bad all the way to best and our best database is just going to look just like this and look how clean and beautiful that looks but we kind of you know we got to go through the steps so we can't just skip to it so first things first let's go ahead focus on the country Country is a one-to-many relationship. One-to-many is probably going to be the most common relationship that you're going to see in SQL database design. And all that we do is we just go create a country table. We give it all these country IDs. We're going to also put our cities for each one. And the city is going in the city and the geo data are going to be logically linked to our country ID. So instead of having this we have canto saffron city you know whatever now we have this which is linked so the one is equal to canto 
the one, you know, Canto, this one's going to be Saffron City. And instead of having all those words and instead of having all of that data in there, we just have our country ID. Also, too, the good thing about splitting apart tables like that is now we can add things like geodata. We could add maybe like last visited or you could add like a date or something. It makes it so that you can think more clearly about your data and also you can add more uh, you know, data to it as well. So we've got our country ID figured out. Next thing that we want to do is we want to worry about this many-to-many -many relationship. This is this is absolutely terrible. We have redundancy in our columns, which is like, <laughs> I you know, I'm getting a little worked up about it. But so this would be a case of a many-to-many -many relationship. A Pokemon, um, you know, s certain owner people who own Pokemon can have you know many Squirtles. Um, Squirtles can belong to many different owners and. It's not like Squirtle can only belong to one owner or there can only be one Squirtle and there can only be like a couple owners under there's so many different there's so many different relationships and there's so many different types of people you know people who can own different Pokemon it's going to be a many to many relationship but many to many relationships are a little bit more in depth and they're a little bit more you know to a certain extent more confusing so Obviously, we need to create an owner table, but the thing about the owner table is watch what happens if we just leave it with just the owner table and we don't actually do anything more. We do get a little bit less re redundancy. We do have the ability to uh, you know, have different owners and different relationships, but we have all this redundancy right here, and that's because it's a many-to-many -many relationship. You know, a Pokemon can have many different owners. And what if, uh, you know, Ash Ketchum for every single different Pokemon that he had or, you know, for every different owner, there was another column here. Like your database will just get so unwieldy and get so confusing. This may work for just if you only, there's only three Pokemon in the whole entire uh, Pokemon game. But after a while, it's going to get so confusing and so unwieldy that it's not even going to make sense. So what we do is we create a join table. And with a join table, we have a Pokemon ID, we have an owner ID, and join tables are ubiquitous. You see join tables everywhere. They're in Postgres, they're in SQL Server, they're, you know, in every possible you know, database that you'll ever see and join tables just look like this. There's a Pokey ID and there's an owner ID. And I accidentally spelled owner. This should be capitalized right here. But what's going to happen is we don't even need to have that many to many relationship because our join table is going to take care of it for us. That's the whole entire reason behind a join table. And that's what's going to allow us to have this best Pokemon database design. So we have the Pokey ID right here. We've added our Pokey ID. We've got our P Pokemon right here. We've got Pokey Dex. We've got the birth date of the Pokemon. And we just have a country ID for our many to many relationship. And that's really at the end of the day, what is going to take you from a really bad database design to a really good database design. And there's more, there's different, you know, there's different levels to boy, you know, voice COD and 1F and 2N or 2NF and all of these things, but really this is what's going to get you in the door and kind of get the wheels turning. And if you kind of want to take it to the next level and you want to learn more of these esoteric terms and these ways of normalizing databases, definitely go for it. But like I said, this is just an introduction so that we can go move into join tables and understand a lot of these other things in uh, the courses that I'm about to teach you and get you to the point where you can kind of conceptualize foreign keys and conceptualize databases a little bit better. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.